if a child isn't interested in something, well, how do we interest them? How do we excite them? I would say step one is learn to be somebody that kid wants to learn from. of Americans identify as not very happy, which can hold you back and negatively affect your relationships and your business. On this podcast, we discuss the proven steps to happiness so you can restore balance and rekindle your joy. Welcome to another episode of How to Be Happier for Entrepreneurs. Today, we have an amazing guest who has been around this business and has helped so many people for so many years. So I usually get excited about these. I got to tell you, today, I am super, super, super excited to welcome John Connolly. John, how are you today? Beautiful to be with you, Brad. Thank you so much for for having me. And we talked before the show, you're in beautiful, sunny, probably warm Florida, where I hope to to be moving here in a couple of years. (laughs) Well, we, we'd like to welcome you. So, John, you have um, pioneered, created, whatever you want to say, this, this rapid resolution therapy. My first question, because we like to just come right out of the gates and, and hit with a hard-hitting question to give the audience Please. some massive value. How is, does rapid resolution therapy distinguish itself from t- traditional therapy models? And how could this be particularly beneficial to entrepreneurs? Um. So how is it different? Um, Gosh, in in so many ways, Brad, um, one significant difference between the process of uh, RRT and um, the stuff that people are used to in terms of traditional um, talk therapy is the RRT facilitator takes responsibility for making sure that the meeting is effective. Um, You'll notice if you've hung out around the uh, mental health and even the coaching industry, um, what I hear is people saying things like, well, the reason that fella didn't really benefit was because he was resistant or because he wasn't ready to change or because he didn't have enough motivation. Um, In the RRT world, we never see anybody who's resistant or not ready to change or doesn't have enough motivation. Um, Instead, um, if I'm not able to assist somebody, I make sure they know that's because I didn't have the skill and I make sure that I connect them with somebody who does. Um, So that's, I think, significantly different. Another difference is um, uh, if if you book an appointment with me, um, uh, treatment is likely to be ending on the same day it started. So um, when people um, look to meet with me to address something, um, we meet once. So um, if you if you got together with me on Friday, you're done by sat. You're, you, it's over before Saturday happens. Um, another difference is that the um, people know that psychotherapy is likely to be um, painful, um, and there will be. Um, often many tears and many people in the mental health industry and coaching believe that the reason people are um, continuing to be troubled is because they haven't fully felt their um, painful feelings. I think that 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 doesn't make make any sense to me. Um, And people going through the RRT process may indeed shed a tear or two but we find that there's an, a, a whole lot more laughter than there is crying in um, most all 
our RG visits. Um, so most of the tears are the kind that come with excessive laughter rather than um, rather than sorrow. So those are those are some of the differences. Um, those are pretty powerful differences. John, how long have you been doing this work and how many people do you think you've helped over the years? Oh, you know, I'm I I I I never have counted. I know it's thousands and I've been doing this since before anybody had the idea of you existing. <laughs> um, so um a, a pretty pretty long time now. Um I'm um, closing in on 77, and I've been doing this stuff since I was um, uh, younger than you and continually through. But, you know, when did I develop the RRT process? I guess the answer is I'm still doing it. Um, I look to get this thing um, in better shape and and have it be more powerful, more effective, and more fun um, um, every day. So I'm I'm continuing to um, um, be having fun um, improving uh, this process. Yeah, I read. I was reading the book, the the mastery or the heart of mastery or the life of mastery last night, and it says something along the lines of the. The master knows they're a master once they realize they are a student forever. Um, and it sounds like that's what you are. So you just said some amazing things that I want to unpack. Um, number one, we're going to hit all three of those. Number one is the client's not ready. I have a 16-year-old daughter. I've been a single dad now for 13 years. And she has been negatively affected by me, by her mother, and by her stepmother over the years. And I can very clearly tell, especially now that I'm in this work, that she makes behavioral choices that aren't always the greatest choices. And they're based on her pain from the past. And I was under the theory that, that as much as I work with her and talk with her, that unless someone is willing and ready to change, they're never going to change. And you just said, that's not right at all. So I want you to, to tell me, cause I'm sure there's other parents in this, in this situation where my daughter doesn't really feel the pain. She sees the bad decisions, but she doesn't really feel the pain. How can I help a 16-year-old help themselves when they don't want the help? You know, one of the big differences, Brad, and it's off track from what you asked me, but I'll get back to what you asked me. But I, I, I really feel to comment on how, how refreshing and wonderful it is to hear the way you ask a question like that, having grown up in the um, in the mental health field, um, we we became. I think that when I was anointed, my my most sacred duty was to be a keeper of shame and make sure that um, um, we could protect everybody's secrets. Um, and um, now. I'm I'm with you, and you move immediately into what I would call the power of transparency. You're able to acknowledge within a few moments, hey, I screwed some stuff up here, and I'm looking for the best thing for my kid, and 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 things hurt her, and and what can I do? That's you know, in your world, you probably talk like that all the time. In the world I grew up in, that's like, what? That is so um, wonderful to, to hear you say that and to say it in front of the, the wonderful people that you're there for and guiding. Thank you. So um, let, let me answer that. We'll get around to your daughter, but let me answer that in terms of just the educational system to start. Um, because the educational system certainly shares with the mental health industry that they take no responsibility for things and instead just blame their failures on others. For instance, um, this um, lady called me the other day, um, somebody I knew, she's crying. Brad, this gal works in a donut the selling store. She sells donuts. Um, and to sell, to make 
enough, she's working almost like a double uh, of what a normal shift would be and has three children, single mom. She's crying because the school principal called, I'm sorry, assistant principal, to complain that her son fell asleep in history class. More than once, the guy said, and, and you got to do something about that. And she was on the phone with me. What do I do? And I said, I don't know. I think maybe you should call them the day after tomorrow and ask to talk to the guy and say, I made dinner last night and my son didn't help with dishes. You have to fix that. <laughs> that, that would be not quite as stupid as what he did. Um, so the, how does the educational system work? They bribe with, you know, if you do, if you're a good boy, you're going to get a B. If you're a better boy, you'll even get a B plus. Um, but if you're not a good boy, then you're going to be subjected to humiliation and banishment. Um, Brad, you know, we both know and are affected by uh, the fact that um, it seems that quite frequently we're reading about somebody going to a school and shooting as many people as possible. I've noticed when that happens, they go to the school that they were educated in. They don't just stop at some other school. And, and when the guy has walked in and, and, and shot a bunch of students and teachers, do you ever hear the principal say, well, I guess we might have screwed that one up? No. Their job was to do what? Educate, socialize. How's that working out if somebody's back there shooting people? So we put parents, as you know, in jail now when their kids shoot people. Um, and I, you know, I don't know about whether that's a good idea, but I think if you're going to put the parents in jail, maybe you should put the, uh, the school principals in jail with them. Um, so you're asking about your, your daughter and, and that. So there they might say, well, she doesn't seem motivated. She doesn't seem so excited for learning. She's not really good at being submissive and compliant. That's what they want. They want her to be a, a, a good girl, uh, submissive, compliant, do what she's told, memorize a bunch of stuff and, and feed it back to them. So how would I like to see education system working? I'd like to see teachers come in. Okay, we're going to teach the Civil War. So let's come in um, dressed up as Civil War characters. You can come in as a Lincoln. And this guy comes in as General Lee. And, and then people dialogue. And it's exciting. And it was an amazing time. And you start doing that passionately to motivate those kids um, you'll, you'll get their attention. You won't have to bribe them with silly letter grades and, and fear of punishment. So um, if a child isn't interested in something, well, how do we interest them? How do we excite them? I would say step one is um, learn to be somebody that kid wants to um, learn from. So if she would, if she thinks her life would be better if she was better able to dance or better able to play poker or better able to anything, how about if, if the person gets better and, and, and offers to teach her and show her and help her with that? Yeah. So, so, John, it's not just in school. There's some things outside of school, but I, I, I love where you're going with this um, because I told her the other day that if she continues to go to school and, and, and skip class and, and put her head down and not do the assignments, I go, you're better off dropping out of high school and going. She has a friend who's a head chef at this really great local restaurant, really great. And she loves cooking and she's great at cooking. And I said, look, I, I, I mean this wholeheartedly. You're better off dropping out of school and doing something you love and at least learning than you are going to school. So I, I absolutely agree with you. So, Michael, so I agree with what you're saying about the interest. 
but outside of school, she's making bad decisions. Whether they're a child or they're an adult, how can you get so, can you get someone to change that doesn't really? Well, yeah, change? if you cause that person, um, I bet Taylor Swift can get people to change. Um, and and others, how they show up and 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 people find them in find her interesting, and they would um, follow what what she's doing. She doesn't tell them she's going to grade them based on whether they pay attention to her. She creates energy that draws them in. So I would want um, somebody with your daughter who can create the kind of energy that would draw her in oh, so is. that she says to you, Dad, can, I, can we see this guy again? I want to I do more of that. Yeah. I really liked what I learned there. So it would be make sure when we meet with her, she has an amazing time, learn some stuff that she's super excited about, has fun, um, and... and 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 if not, you know, let her know. Hey, I'm sorry, but 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 I know somebody else. I think that they're going to be exciting for you. Like, take responsibility for it. I love it. Energize her. Get someone. I love it. So the second thing you said about how you're different, how how RRT is different, is that you meet with you once. If there are people listening, because if I was listening to this five years ago, I've been like, who is that crazy man? There's no way that he could heal someone in one, in one session. But three years ago, in a three-hour session in an Airbnb bedroom outside of Park City, Utah, my life forever changed. And that was after going to therapy for, for three decades. So for the people who are hearing you say, if you've got an issue, whether it's addiction or depression or anxiety, whatever it is, you work too much. All of those, yes. You're cheating on your wife. You're, you're, you're overweight. You use food as an addiction. How, how can you literally convince them that, that they can because they've probably been the person that's going to therapy for decades? How can you convince them that it is possible that in one session, an hour or two, that you can completely change their life? Or help I them? think that's a, that's, a, that's a beautiful question, Brad. One of the things we do is I, I uh, six times a month, I want to make sure that what I developed goes out there and that money isn't a barrier for people benefiting. Um, uh, if somebody wants to meet with me privately, there's a cost to that generally. But uh, six times a month, I do a, an open group. It's called Solutions. Um, and anybody can attend, and those who attend can raise their hand and ask about anything. So um, just the other day, I think about a week, 10 days ago, I'm remembering one young lady raises her hand. I said, what's going on for you? And she says, I I'm afraid somebody's going to kill me. I think I'm going to get murdered. I worry about it all the time. I said, how long has that been worrying you? Um, she said, I don't remember when it didn't. Somehow it got into my head when I was a child. She's, she's in her um, uh, early 30s. Um, so there we are. Uh, there, there's a whole bunch of people in the room listening, you know, on Zoom. Um, and we can see their faces. And I see her face. And she and I are talking. And I think we talked for about 20, 22 minutes. At the end of that 22 minutes, she doesn't know how to be afraid of this. Mm. She truly doesn't know how to be afraid of it. She sent us this wonderful um, testament about her experience and how life changed. That kind of thing is happening there. Um, and so a, a good a good answer to the question of how can I believe that this can happen is, well, just watch it happen. <laughs> how, how, how can someone join that or, or be a part of that group, John? You, you, you just jump onto uh, my website, which you kindly list underneath us there, rapidresolutiontherapy.com. Register for solutions. It's um, sometimes uh, Eastern time in evening, sometimes in afternoon, because we want to accommodate the, the people in, in Europe also at a reasonable time. 
um, and and it's free and you jump in. A lot of folks write to us and say, I've never raised my hand. I've never spoken directly to you. But what I learned applied to my issue. And I no longer have insomnia. I had it 20 years. It's gone. So we hear from people we work with, but we hear from people we don't work with. Another way to notice that it can happen quickly is I have two books out. One is called Life-Changing Conversations. First chapter of each chapter dealt with an individual whose life changed in a single meeting. The first one, young a lady named Kristen, came in. Um, her experience was that she was having um, very uh, dramatic seizures uh, four or five times a day. She had to keep a, a helmet on all the time. Uh, if she went out uh, to walk somewhere, probably a wheelchair, but if not a three-pronged uh, cane, and somebody with her, the helmet is so she doesn't like smash her head into the oven or something. Um, and and she'd been in treatment at um, a Mayo Clinic, world-renowned, um, getting medical treatment, getting um, a, a number of psychologists working with her, super motivated, super stuck. Um, and we met once. She's never had another seizure. She did a uh, TED Talk about her experience. Um, and, and now she's she's a really uh, skilled healer. And, and Did she mention you in the TED Talk? Oh, she sure did. Oh, um, and um, uh, it was uh, just so so sweet, and a ton of people have have um, come in from her. But each chapter in the book, life changing conversations, shows somebody's life changing um, in a in quickly in a conversation, or just quickly with the one guy. I think at the end of the group. I remember meeting at the end of the book, I remember meeting him. He had completed medical school and then took the licensing exam and missed it by one point, Brad. Um, don't you hate when that happens? And somebody said, oh, you need to see uh, a, a, a therapist. And he ends up seeing a licensed therapist who does hypnotherapy, but I don't think knows what she's doing. The result of this was that this guy was no longer able to read. I mean, he wasn't able to read, like he wasn't able to read Reader's Digest. Wow. Um, and, and I meet him like four years later. Of course, he can now never pass the test because how can you study? You can't study because you can't read. And he couldn't read ever since he saw this therapist who, so much of what I end up treating, by the way, is, it is it, caused by people who people went to for treatment. Um, there, there's something called iatrogenic illness, meaning physician called illness. And there's a ton of, of, of um, practitioner caused um, emotional, mental things. This, this was one of them. And we had a conversation again, it was about 20 minutes. Then he picked up a book, started reading, and passed the test. Um, so how is it done? Well, we're, we're not trying to keep it secret. We're trying to we're trying to share it. So it's in the book, word for word, what I said, what he said, how it happened, and we explain it. So there's life changing conversations, and there's another book called "Grief Is Not Sacred." Um, that um, particularly concerns um, that issue. So I'm trying to answer your wonderful question, which is how can somebody possibly um, um, uh, open up to the possibility that something positive can be done quickly? Well, by by watching it, by reading about it, I, by I hearing it, and by realizing that we can get different results because we're not doing we're, what we're doing doesn't have anything in common with what people in the mental health industry are doing. So, 
Yeah. Pick one of those stories that you just talked about because I know our listeners are going to want to hear going to hear like the, the magic of, of behind that. And can you give us the 30 second version of what are you doing that is so different from traditional yeah. therapy that often takes decades and doesn't, you know, doesn't work? What we're doing that's different is this. One is if you tell me you're stuck, which means you're experiencing maybe some emotional pain. Or maybe you say, I would be so much better off if I was to do this, but I don't do this. Stuck. If you're stuck, one is, I know it's my job to fix it. Two, I believe, I think, that the thing that's causing the experience you're having is going on within your mind, but outside of conscious awareness. So that's where it is. So if if you walked in and said, the thing that's bothering me is that my um, 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 father hit me in the face when I was 12, I'd say, well, in my world, what's bothering you is your mind processing stuff that probably includes that. But luckily, you brought your mind right with you. I mean, you didn't bring yourself at nine with your father with you, but you brought your mind. Your mind is attempting to serve you but we're we're really running the beta version. I mean, it's advanced and screwed up as hell. So um, what I've learned to do is get in, turn the dials in the way mind is processing info. So, for instance, in um, in in this situation with um, a lovely Kristen who had the seizures I was talking about, her. Um, her 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 sister, who she deeply loved, was killed um, by a drunk driver a number of years before the first seizure. Um, what was going on? Her mind was trying to get her to cause her sister to not have gotten killed. Perhaps her mind is trying to get her to cause the guy who is drunk driving the car to not have been driving since he had been stopped driving drunk a number of times previously. You can't cause things to have been different, but her mind thinking it shouldn't have happened is trying to cause it, and it's jammed up putting all kinds of energy into what can't possibly respond to the energy. So she's, um, and, and then it just explodes, Brad, with these uh, terrible, uh, seizures. So what I got to do is get in there and shift, not just the way she thinks about it here, but the whole experience um, inside. Gal said to me just last night, she said, the problem for me is that I, I, I always feel like I'm not worthwhile. And I said, well, do you think that you're not worthwhile? And she said, well, no. And I said, so you don't think you're not worthwhile? I said, maybe, could that be the, the thing? The reason you feel like you're not worthwhile is just because, for goodness sakes, you're not worthwhile. She said, no, that's ridiculous. It's not that I'm not, it's that I feel like I'm not. Oh, so here you get it. Top of your mind where there's um, rationality. Inside hasn't gotten that memo. Inside is is resting on something that if you are worthwhile, good things will happen to you. Some things happen that weren't good. Hence, you must be useless. Mm. Um, so we identify it and then shift the way her unconscious processes, her conscious and her unconscious. So what she experiences is the shift is automatic. So people leave um, various kinds of coaching saying, okay, I have to now really try to remember to implement this. If somebody's thinking that after they've seen me, it's because I screwed up. I don't want people remembering to implement it. I'm looking for the change, the transformation to take place from inside out so that it's experienced as automatic, natural, and so now when you say to her, well, how come you're um, eating so differently and losing weight? 
um, is that requiring a lot of effort? She answers and says, well, I don't know what you mean, Brad. I'm just doing what I feel like. I'm just being myself. So we have to shift it from inside to cause that. And so I spent a lot of time understanding how do we, how do we affect the mind from outside in and from inside out and, and reshuffle it so that, so that it, it, it works for people. How do we get rid of things like shame, guilt, resentment, jealousy, or, 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 and, and all these new designer problems I never heard of when I was growing up, like imposter syndrome um, or um, deep relationship with narcissists or, or whatever. How do, we, how do we fix that stuff? Well, if we, if we kind of know how it works, then we can get in there and, and flip it. Um, um, but it's done differently. It's not done by encouraging you to start thinking about what might have happened earlier in your life that caused you to have this problem currently. None of that happens. No self-analysis, no trying to get insight, no trying to examine your thoughts. We have people with racing minds. They go to therapists and they say, I have all these thoughts. And the therapist says, well, you got to put them all on a piece of paper and then think about them. Can you imagine? I mean, a guy came to me, he was ready to blow his brains out. What, what happened? He says, my thoughts are, have exploded. When did this happen? Well, they were really bad, but then I went for therapy. And then, well, then it really, got, I mean, I didn't know what bad was. Because now I've got all the thoughts about the thoughts about the thoughts about the thoughts and graphs all over my house. What do I do? Get rid of the graphs. <laughs> and, and let's turn a few dials here. I hear, I hear that a lot with entrepreneurs racing minds. Um, what, what advice would you give an entrepreneur that had a racing mind? Um, to get. So if your mind was racing, Brad, I would tell you first. My guess is, without d digging in a little bit, but I guess that all of those thoughts and the energy that's causing them is coming from your mind interested in your protection. It's looking to serve you, but it's screwing it up. So if I can make contact with where it's looking to serve you, but screwing it up and then suggest, well, here's how you can accomplish your mission. Here's how you can, well, what's it looking to do to protect? Okay, here's how you protect her. Oh, okay. Um, and one of the things you can do to protect her right away is get rid of all these thoughts because they're distracting her from protection. Oh, okay. Yeah. I also work with a number of entrepreneurs who feel they're not enough and they want to heal that part of them but they feel that like if they heal the I'm not enough, that they're going to lose their drive for business. Right. What would you tell um, them? Well, I, I would say, uh, nope. Um, I, I'm pretty successful. I know other people that are successful. And the people who are successful when I interview them and you interview them, how many of them say, yeah, well, the reason that I'm so happy is because I make sure to realize that I'm not enough all day long. You know, so the whole notion that this is working for you. Well, good. If it's working for you, bottle it and sell courses on how to experience it. But I bet you it's not or he wouldn't be complaining to you about it. Um, and um, so we we want to get in there and 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 shift that so that that can um work for him the problem i see is that so if if there's a positive approach to this by a, a number of people in the coaching industry they're probably going to say no you got to not be telling yourself you're not worthwhile. Well, what do I tell myself? That you are worthwhile. Don't tell yourself you're not enough. What am I supposed to tell myself? I am enough. Oh, okay, that works great, except for that doesn't work. You're still in the same freaking game. You're playing with the same coin. 
heads or tails. So um, I would say if you look at other life forms, think of an eagle who's having a great life. Um, it, it, is he flying up there thinking, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a very worthwhile eagle here. I'm, I'm quite a, uh, enough. It, it doesn't even occur. These things are distractions that don't have anything to do with success. Um, so we eliminate them rather, we, so we'd eliminate the whole idea of enough, not enough, rather than attempting to master it with the thought that I am enough. We'd eliminate worthwhile. We'd eliminate I deserve it. And we certainly don't send people home to go love on themselves. I don't think there's any other creature spending time trying to love itself before it accomplishes anything worthwhile. And I think humans would be a lot better off if we weren't trying to do that. Interesting. Interesting. I may have to have you back on another show just to, uh, just to talk about that. Um, so as we, as we wrap up, John, because you have all of these um, these tools and these skills and these knowledge, is there anything you struggle with, or is it just life is just amazing one hundred percent of the time? Oh, it certainly isn't. Um, and and there 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 are too many people telling us that their lives are amazing one hundred percent of the time, and I think they think they do it because they get paid for it. I mean. I, I used to pass this guy regularly. I'd say to him every time, hey, how you doing, Joe? Joe would say, how am I doing? Awesome. Awesome. One day he finally said, how are you doing? I said, depressed. He said, depressed? How could you be depressed? I said, I think it happens every time I have to hear about how you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there are things that are disappointing, sad, unhappy, what have you. Um, I guess the thing that weighs heaviest on me, though, is that um, I, I, I feel I have the solution to what's causing a whole lot of people pain, and I'm giving it out, but way too slow. Uh, way too slow. We can get somebody who's been suffering because of a, 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 a childhood sex trauma better painlessly in a day. Mm. And yet, you know, if somebody goes for treatment for that, 99% of the time they're going to be brought into something that actually causes more pain. And, and, and they're going to be with the therapist for, for like I was for decades. So I... Yeah. Look, if if you're a skeptic, just just like John said, go listen to his solutions at every what when you said once every six weeks. Go to no, 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 six times a month. Six times a month. Sorry, go to Rapid Solutions. Two to three hours, six times a month. Solutions on Rapid Resolution Therapy. I'm about to kick off a new course. If you want to learn not only to experience this, have personal breakthroughs, and learn to do it for others, and perhaps have a, um, a, a, a lucrative career doing this. We're beginning a course on May 10th. Um, it's called Foundation. And um, uh, let me give you a code, folks. The, the code is SHIFT, SHIFT, like an automobile shift, SHIFT 25. That'll give you a 25% reduction um, off of the... Um, cost of attending. We'd love to have you there. It's a 10-week course, once a week, 10 weeks in a row, teach all kinds of uh, skills and being able to pick this thing up and, and, um, and utilize it. Three things, personal breakthrough, you'll know what to do when somebody you care about goes through something hurtful. Um, what do you say to your um, daughter when she didn't get on the cheerleading team, or worse yet, when her best friend dies. Um, how do you how do you address things? We cover all of that, and we begin teaching the skills necessary to to have a, a career with this for those who are interested. That's coming up on the tenth. So there's all kinds of opportunities to learn this. We have a a, a free recording that's on um, immune enhancement, mind-body healing, that's available on the website. Um, 
tons and tons of um, podcast interviews um, where we uh, explain various aspects of this process. I want to go back to when you said to me, what's wrong with you? Where are you still um, jangled up? I guess in all kinds of ways. But um, particularly, I get jangled up because I'm I, I, I'm, I haven't figured out how to push this out fast enough for me. I'm, I'm very aware of the enormity of the suffering that's going on that doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to. I tell that to people all the time. I end the podcast a lot with, if you're suffering, you don't have to. And it doesn't take years. It doesn't take months. It can take hours with working with someone like yourself or with me. So John, we got to wrap up. Um, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the work you do. The world appreciates the the, the work that you do. Um, this was our first time talking. I hope this relationship carries on. I'm going to check. Oh, out. Oh, I sure hope so, Brett. Hey, somebody stands you up. I'm your guy. You, you <laughs> call me. I would love to do this with Thank you. you. I, 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 found about, I found out about you through Courtney Armstrong, who I have a ton of respect for too. So um, you are the real deal, despite you know the naysayers might say, "Hey, this guy's a." He's crazy. It can't happen. I know it can happen because it happened in my life. In three Courtney's hours, one of the best things I ever did. Yeah. She's <laughs> amazing. So anyway, um, until next time, John, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm on a mission here to help you know a million people, and I need your help. So if you're watching this, I can't do it alone. Please share this. If someone's suffering, please please share it with them. And if not, just, just like it, subscribe, uh, rate it, review it, anything you can do to push this word out. Because uh, because what John said today was pretty powerful. And again, trying to help a bunch of people, I need your help. So until next time, uh, love heals all. Hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out on more life-changing content. And if you're struggling, you don't have to. Go to bradchandler.com slash contact. There, you can join the Facebook community of like-minded entrepreneurs, and you'll see a button to schedule your freedom and happiness call. See you on the next episode.